Hey guys, welcome to my office building service calculation video. This is based on the 2023 NEC. Now there have been a few changes since 2020 that they have made, but most of them are just kind of a, a restructuring. They've done some renumbering and shifted some sections around in 220. But um, there are a few things that do actually affect the calculations though that they have changed. And I'll point those out as we go along. Now this is a crash course series. so. I'm going to be going fairly quickly through this. I'm going to explain each step of the way to get a calculation, a full on amperage for your surface size. Now, if you want something a little bit more in depth, I do have a deep dive series on a general commercial calc. That's where I take a, um, a retail store example and I go through every single little detail, every nuance, every calculation, every code reference and show you exactly where to go for everything. Um, and I take my time to do that. So check that one out. It'll be in the description and there will probably be a link at the end of this video for that as well. Okay, let's get rolling. Okay, now here's a table that I developed and it's gonna take you step-by-step step through it. And we're just gonna go over this really quick right now. And then we'll get into our example and we'll start filling in the blanks. We're gonna start over here in the left-hand column. And basically you're just gonna work from the upper left to the lower right. So we're gonna go Take the square footage of our building first, put that value here. We're going to get a multiplier from table 220.42a. We're going to multiply that by our square footage and come up with our minimum lighting load. After that, we're going to find our lighting load demand factor from table 220.45, and we're going to come up with a lighting demand load. Next, we're going to get into our specialty lighting, our show window lighting, our track lighting, and our sign and outline lighting. We're going to put those values in here. We'll move on to our receptacle loads, figure out if we have any kind of demand we can apply. And we're going to add those together and come up with a subtotal. I'm going to slide that number up here. Then we're going to get into any other loads that we have that apply to our service. And we're going to go to 220.14, A through E and K. After that, we're going to go to kitchen equipment if we have anything. Now in an office building, we typically don't have any kitchen equipment, but there are some cases where you will have a, a cafeteria, say. And so this section would apply. In our case, it won't for this example. We don't have any kitchen equipment. It's a smaller office building. After that, we take our heating and cooling and we'll get into our non-coincident loads and our largest motor. And after tallying all these numbers up, we'll come up with our total building VA. Once we have that, we'll divide by our voltage and have our surface amps. Once we have our service amps, of course, we can start to size our feeders and our conduit, all that. Okay, so here is our office building. We have an 8,000 square foot building. We have 10 four foot sections of track lighting. We've got eight power poles that serve four cubicles each, and then each cubicle has four receptacles. We've got 65 general receptacles in the building. We have two one-tenth horsepower exhaust fans, and it notes that they're on the general lighting circuits. That'll be significant, and we'll talk about that. Two 15 kW rooftop heating units, two 8 kW air conditioning units, two 1600 watt hand dryers, four 400 watt copier or printer stations, seven 80 watt motorized window shades, 600 watt building sign. The service is 120 208 volt three phase and we're going to try to find the total calculated service load. Okay, so here we have our table again, and we have all of our data over here listed on the right side. First thing we show is we have our 8,000 square feet, and our first cell over here is our building square footage. So we're going to take 8,000, and we're going to put it in right here. Then we're going to take a multiplier, and we're going to have to go to table 220.42a for that multiplier. And as we see this, we have a whole bunch of occupancy types listed on the left side with their values on the right. We're going to go down to office and it's going to show us 1.3 VA per square foot for an office. So we will multiply our square footage 8,000 times 1.3 from the table. So we multiply that out and that gives us our minimum lighting load, 10,400 VA. Once we do that, we're going to find our lighting load demand factor, and we're going to go to table 220.45. 
Okay, so it shows our lighting load demand factors. We have our occupancy types over here, dwelling units, hotels, motels, warehouses, and then all others. Now all others is where our office is gonna fall. And it tells us that our demand factor for an office is 100%. We're gonna put 100% here. 100% of 10,400 is of course 10,400 VA. And that is our lighting demand load. Okay, now we're gonna move into our specialty lighting. Now we don't have any show window lighting because this is just an office space, but we do have track lighting. It tells us we have 10 four foot sections of track lighting. So now track lighting in 220.46B, we are told that it gets figured at 150 VA per two foot of track. So the first thing to do is figure out how many two foot sections of track we have. So we'll take the number of tracks, which is 10, and then our feet per track, which is four. There are four foot sections. So 10 times four is 40 feet, that's our total length of track. Then we gotta figure out how many two foot sections are there. So we'll divide by two and we have 20 two foot sections of track. That way we can multiply by our 150 VA and we come up with 3000 VA for our subtotal. Now because this specialty lighting can and most likely will be operating for more than three hours at a time, it is a continuous load. Therefore we have to take it at 125%. So 3,000 times 1.25 is 3,750 VA, and that is our total load for track lighting. Next, we go on to our sign and outline lighting. We are told we have a 600 watt building sign. Now under 220.14F, we are told that we need to comply with article 600.5A, and 600.5A tells us that any building that has access to the public requires a minimum of one 1200 watt circuit for a sign. So even though we know it's only a 600 watt sign, we have to figure in 1200 watt minimum for that circuit. But again, since it's gonna be on for more than three hours at a time, it's a continuous load. So we have to multiply by 125%. 1200 times 125% is 1500 VA. So that's the total for our sign and outline lighting. Okay, next is our receptacle loads. We are told we have Eight power poles serving four cubicles each, four receptacles per cubicle. Okay, so this is just some simple math here. We gotta figure out how many receptacles this is. We take the number of power poles first, we have eight. Then we take the number of cubicles per power pole, and that's four. And then we take the number of receptacles per cubicle, and that's four. Then 220.14i tells us that each receptacle requires 90 VA value. So we just multiply all these together, eight times four times four times 90, and we come up with a total of 11,520 VA, and that's for the power poles. Now we also have 65 general duplex receptacles, so we're gonna figure out those. We got 65 general receptacles, and 220.14i tells us that for a duplex receptacle, each one requires 180 VA. So 65 times 180 gives us a total of 11,700 VA for our general receptacles. Then all we have to do is add these two values together and we come up with a 23,220 for our total VA for receptacle loads. Now we go to table 220.47 and it tells us that we take the first 10,000 or less at 100%. So we're gonna take 10,000 out of this total value here and put that right here, 100%. Then it tells us the remainder of the receptacle value can be taken at 50%. So once we take the 10,000 out of here, we're left with 13,220. 50% of that is 6,610. Once we have these numbers, we're gonna add up all these bold numbers here, and we're gonna come up with 32,260 VA for our subtotal. Okay, we're gonna slide that subtotal right up here to the top of this column. And now we're gonna get into our other loads. And we're gonna to go to 220.14 A through E and K. Now, the reason we're only taking those because the rest of them don't apply to us, except for F, which we already covered here for sign and outline lighting. But the rest of these are, are mainly um, residential and, and other things that don't apply to an office building. So we're just doing A through E and K. We are told that we have two 110 horsepower exhaust fans. 
Now those would go under the other load section, except we are told they are on the general lighting circuits. And if we go to 220.42, it tells us that motor loads less than 1 8 horsepower that are on a lighting circuit are included in the general lighting load. So they'd be included over here in our general lighting load. So we don't have to worry about these getting figured into the other loads category. Okay, next it tells us we have two 8KW air conditioning units. We're going to put those down here though under cooling because we're going to end up comparing those to the heating later. So two 8K dubs is 16,000 VA. We'll put that right down here and come back to that. Next, it tells us we have two 1600 watt hand dryers. So we got that here, 3200. Four 400 watt copier printer stations, so 1600. And seven 80 watt motorized window shades, so 560 VA. And that does it for our other loads in this calculation. And then moving on, our kitchen equipment is non-existent. Okay, next is our heating. We have two 15KW rooftop heating units, so 30,000 for heating. So now we have both our heating and our cooling listed here. We're gonna move on to non-coincident loads, and being that the heating and the cooling are non-coincident loads, we're gonna take the largest of the two, and obviously that is the heating in this case. So 30,000 will be our value here. Last one, we have the largest motor. The largest motor here is going to be just one of the air conditioning units, and they are 8 kW a piece, so 25% of 8 kW is 2000 VA. And the reason I'm treating it this way, as opposed to how we've always treated it in the past, like prior to 2020, I explained that in great detail in my non coincident load video. Please check that out if you have any confusion of why we're doing it this way. It's a little bit different how we've done it in the past. And again, it's not how I think they intend it to be taken, but that's the way it's worded. So that's what we're bound to when we're applying the NEC. We have to go with how it's worded, not what we think they might've meant. So, okay, now we just add up our bold numbers here again, and we come up with a total building VA of 69,620 VA. We have a 208 volt, three phase service. So we're going to divide our VA by our voltage, but first we have to multiply our voltage by the square root of three because it's three phase. Then we divide it and we get 193 amps. And that is a completed calculation. You can see how quickly and easily you can do this. Once you have the data, once you have all the information, it's just a matter of plugging it in and you can literally do a full office calculation in just a few minutes, really. Okay, now here is a blank table, so you can copy this, you can screenshot it and print it out and use it and use it as a, a, a practice sheet if you're practicing for an exam or you can use it um, you know, for doing load calcs in the, the field or, or however you like. Hey, thanks a lot guys for watching this video. Uh, please like if you did like it. And if you haven't subscribed, please do that. It helps me out a lot. I've got a lot of other videos out there. I have a 2020 series and I'm working through my 2023 series now. If you have any other types of videos you want to see, please let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do about getting those out. Okay guys, I will see you next time.